Hello everyone. In this video, we want to discuss working with migration tables. A migration table is used when you copy or import a group policy object from one domain or forest to another domain or forest. The challenge is that when we migrate a group policy object, this group policy object has settings that are used by users or groups, and these users and groups have permission to certain objects within the domain or forest. And what you want to do is to use the migration table to migrate these settings or principles as we call them, the principle being the user or the group over to the destination domain. We're going to be using the migration table to reference these users, groups, or computers to a new value in the destination GPO. So we're going to copy, we're going to be copying the GPO from the source domain to another domain, and we're going to be using the migration table to reference again users, groups, or computers to the new domain or forest. Now, we have group policy objects on the screen. And the first thing that we want to do is look at how we would automatically populate a migration table from a group policy object. And we have here the wallpaper group policy object. And we want to take that object and we want to migrate that object using the migration table. So our first demonstration is going to be automatically populating the migration. So our first task is going to be automatically populating the migration table using the group policy object. The first thing that we want to do is to open the migration table editor. And we can do this by clicking on group policy objects and saying open migration table. Now we want to click on tools. And notice that we have two options here, populate from the group policy object and populate from backup. So we could have backed up a group policy object and we can populate this migration table either from the backup GPO or from a GPO that exists. We're going to select the first one, populate from GPO. And you're, you're going to get a list of all your group policy objects and you choose the one that you want to use. And we're going to use the wallpaper GPO. So we want to click on wallpaper GPO. And then we want to click on include security principles on the GPO. So the, the group policy object would have attached to it the security principles that will be your users your groups or your computers that actually have access to the settings in the gpo so to do that you want to click the checkbox here join scan include security principles from the access list so we want to click on that checkbox and then click on ok so you can see here that we have the source name, the source type, 
and the destination name. We can also create an entirely new migration table. And we're going to look at that. Let's just close this one. And we want to save the change. And we're going to call it wallpaper migration table. So that's what we're going to type wallpaper M I G T A B L E and enter. And there we have the name wallpaper migration table M I G T A B L E. And we want to just take out that A so we spell table correctly. And then we want to click on save. All right, let us go through the steps of actually creating the migration table. Just now what we did, we populated the migration table from the existing GPO. So we're going to go back to open the group migration table editor. So we're going to say open migration table editor and Instead of populating from the GPO, we're going to right click here in the source box and we're going to say browse. And we're going to click on advanced. So we're populating now the user or the group that we want. And we want to choose domain users. Click on OK. Click on OK a second time. And you see that we have domain users and the source type will automatically jump into place. It's a domain global group. So we could have picked out a user. We could have picked out a, a particular group. And now we need to locate the destination name. And to do that, we can simply right click and say set destination same as source so the domain users from the present domain are going to be migrated to the domain users container in the destination domain if you enter the source name manually that's if we didn't browse for it you have to type the exact name of the user, computer, or group. So the type of the source name must match the source type specified in the migration table. So for each source that I want to include in the migration table, I will do the same thing. I will right click, find the source. If I browse for it, the source type will automatic come in, automatically jump in. And then you can choose the destination name, which would be the same as source. And that's how we use the migration table editor to migrate the group policy settings to the new domain which might be located in another forest from your source forest. Next, we want to talk about how we would reset the default domain policy. Now, it is recommended that you not modify the default domain policy or default domain controller's policy unless necessary. Instead, it would be better to create a new GPO at the domain level and set that GPO to override the default settings in the default policies. But let's assume that for some reason, we actually edited the default domain policy 
and there was an error. And we need to get the default domain policy back to the default settings. Now, of course, we could simply back up that policy and then restore the policy if needs be. But we also have the option of running a simple command at the command line prompt. At that, and that command is DC GPO fix. And that is going to restore the default domain policy for GPOs. Let's just take a look and see how it is done. At the command prompt, we're going to type DC GPO FIX. So let's type it. We're going to use the on, key, on screen keyboard to type the command DC GPO FIX. And we want to click on enter to execute the command. And you see here that we're recreating the default group policy objects for a domain. Let's read the description. This utility can restore either or both the default domain policy or the default domain controller's policy to the state that exists immediately after domain creation. You must be a domain administrator to perform this operation. Now be careful here, because remember what it says, it restores it to the point immediately after domain creation. So if you have a problem here, when you run this command, you might want to go and restore the default group policy object that you had backed up. I would want to think that you would only want to do this in a test environment. Now at the command prompt here, you're asked, do you want to continue? And the statement is you're about to restore default domain policy and default domain controller policy for the Contoso domain. And we want to continue, so we're going to go ahead and click on Y, then press Enter to execute. And we have another message telling us, warning us, that the operation will replace all user rights assignments made within the chosen GPO. This might cause some server applications to fail. Do you want to continue? If you want to continue, you have to type Y and click on Enter. And you will see the default domain controller policy was restored successfully. And that is how we would reset the default GPO. Remember, you might only want to do this in a testing environment. If you have a problem with any of your policies in your default GPO, you might want to restore from backup in the production environment. In our session, we have looked at migration table and we have looked at resetting the default group policy object for the domain. This is the end of our session, and I want to thank you for listening.